That was the intro sequence to In Search of Water, a short game I created in 72 hours for the 49th Ludum Dare Game Jam, an event in which participants have 48 or 72 hours to create a game based around the theme that is announced at the beginning of the event. The theme for this jam was unstable. This was my fourth time participating in Ludum Dare, and I usually go into the jam with something I want to learn or explore. It seemed like a good opportunity to experiment with procedural animation and AI, so I created a flying bug monster which became the main antagonist. The creature has three states, idle, walking and flying. It can attack the player whilst flying or walking, but only when the player is below the creature and within a set distance. This allowed interactions with the creature to remain tense, but also feel fair. I used procedural animation for most of the movement. The legs are rigged in Unity and set up with inverse kinematics, which pretty much did half of the work for me, as all I needed to do was guide the feet. When walking, the body moves left or right towards the player, and the feet are fixed in place. Target points are placed as child objects of the body, so they move with it. I cast a ray down to the ground and set the Y position of each target to ensure they remain on the ground. Once the target has moved a set distance away from a foot, the creature will then take a step. This process is calculated individually for each leg. If I were to revisit this, I'd probably add a slight delay between each leg movement, as it can look unnatural at times, but it does the job. I also made the head look at the player, which was quick to add, but really helped bring the creature to life. The player began life quite different to how it is in the final version of the game. I originally planned to make a small glowing mouse creature that could run and jump off walls. Apart from its glow, the main defining feature was meant to be a tail that would follow behind and make jumps feel more impactful. I stripped back the character's visuals so I could focus on the tail, and after playing around I added a few more tails. This resulted in a gross eyeball looking creature that I liked a lot. I thought it looked cool jumping from walls and visually stronger than the mouse did. I'd also spent far too long working on the tail, so the new design saved a lot of time. Blackthorn Prod's video of procedural tails helped a lot with this stage, so I've linked it below. One issue I encountered was the character looked great jumping, but looked really strange sliding across the floor. One solution could have been to make the player constantly hop, as I found myself doing this a lot whilst playtesting, mainly because I thought it looked better. But I thought this ran the risk of making the player more difficult to control, and potentially feel unfair or annoying. Instead, I chose to remove the movement altogether, and only allow the player to move when jumping. This instantly felt more interesting to play, and made the interaction with the enemy creature feel more tense. Variable jump height gave the player a lot of control over each jump, allowing the restriction to remain fair, but fun. Around the same time, I had also been playing around with water and swimming. Swimming movement was pretty much an accident. When floating in water, the player was classed as not grounded, meaning the player was technically in the air and allowed to move. This addition also led to the idea of the player being predominantly a water creature, giving context to the strange movement on land. I liked this contrast between fluid movement in the water and the limited movement on land. Buoyancy was added with the buoyancy effect the 2D component, so it was quick to sort out. As for the dynamic waves and interactions, I pretty much just followed some tutorials and slightly edited how the water interacts with the player during collisions. I've linked all tutorials and reference below. I definitely want to expand on the water physics in the future and potentially find a more efficient solution. Small areas of water were generally fine, but larger areas such as in the ending scene caused a massive drop in frame rate. To combat this, I added triggers throughout the level which enabled and disabled certain objects in the scene. For the end sequence I had to disable most of the level, luckily this area was already designed so the player cannot backtrack. When experimenting more with the tail movement I really wanted to create a water monster. I'm currently reading Frank Herbert's Dune and was somewhat inspired to make something worm-like. This took a bit of work to get right and at this stage the late nights were starting to catch up. I was making small mistakes such as accidentally making the target movement nodes a child object of the creature which resulted in this wonderful display. To justify spending time on the creature, I scripted an event where it catches and eats the flying bug monster once it's above the water. I thought this was a cool moment as it was a fun way to dispose of the enemy but also show that water isn't necessarily safer than land. I usually leave the environmental details until last, as I place more importance on creating an experience the player can finish. As only a small amount of time is given to fleshing out the environment, I limited myself to a simple style. I kept it somewhat abstract, predominantly using squares or existing sprites to create the cave-like structure. To add depth, I split the scene into three layers, assigning a colour to each. Black in the foreground, with each layer getting lighter as we progress into the background. For the walkable layer, the layer the player interacts with, objects are allowed two colours if details are needed, such as eyes or outlines. This is particularly noticeable on water, as I highlighted the top to show it wasn't a solid object. 
To break up the blocky appearance, I add post pro effects. The grain effect ties it all together and produces something quite atmospheric, yet simple. It's quick to add and it's a go-to for most of my projects. This is the first game jam I've made cutscenes for, such as the intro sequence shown at the beginning of this video. It was really fun to make but also incredibly time consuming. For this particular game, I think it was the right call, as it set the tone and context of the game well. The response from players was positive and seemingly impactful. In other games, I would argue that time might be better spent on extra levels of gameplay features, but this is certainly contextual. Overall, I'm happy with how the game turned out. I managed to fit in a lot more than I expected, and the response from players has been really positive so far. If you want to play In Search of Water, there is a link in the description as well as links to the reference material I used to create it. Let me know what you think in the comments and follow for more development videos.